Hi everybody and welcome back. I'm sort of in the process of starting and working on a few assorted projects. So for right now I just kind of want to open this video back up so that I don't forget to record before everything is done. So I'm just going to brief you on everything that's going on. In the last video I talked about the windmill going out on the display. That should still be happening. I just haven't had time to get to it yet. I did just have to move it back here until I can get to that part. I had a couple of guests come through and usually when I have have people through here they ask about the Duplo so I wanted to have that operational and it doesn't rotate when I have a temp fan hanging in this location so I guess hopefully we'll deal with the windmill later on in this video I think the next thing I want to show you is I made this Emerson eco motor display originally I was going to do some more vinyl signage around it in some way I had already cut out and stuck on this vinyl decal however since I put that up I have parted out this hunter air max motor this was from a cleanup week fan this year and all the wiring coming out on the switch housing end was damaged. The fan was all beat up and the blades were painted anyways so it was pretty much a total loss but I decided I could make an Air Max display motor out of this so I'm thinking I might eliminate any extra vinyl signage for the eco motor. I was going to do a larger Emerson logo but I'm thinking I might remove this lettering do an Emerson logo along with the eco motor logo and stick both of those on the motor and as far as the Air Max motor motor goes I want to cut out a hunter logo and some air max lettering and stick it on the side and then I'm thinking I'll mount it somewhere over here with the eco motor it's a little bit different vision than I was originally going for but I think it'll make more sense now on to this project lately I've been wanting to find a better way to display and almost merchandise some of these hanging accessories so her burgers which is the local name for our Bonton stores is of course going out of business it's getting down to the final day and this weekend we were through there just to see what was left. I saw this small display in the store fixtures for sale and thought it would be perfect for what I've been trying to do. So I literally just got this home a few hours ago. I just grabbed some of the items that I've had sitting up here to just see how they would kind of fit on here. I don't know where exactly I'm going to set this unit yet, but I think it's going to be great. It is double-sided and rotates. So I've already removed the logos from the store that were on top. I'll definitely be cutting out some new fan logos to go in those spots. I think I'll also want to get some different hooks. These ones are just way longer than they really have to be, but I will probably continue to show you progress on this as I have time to work on it. So now down to the final project, which I want to do right now. I finally have LED bulbs for the wall sconces. Originally, I just put in incandescence to keep it cheap, but I actually use the wall sconces quite often because they provide enough light to get around and see what I'm doing without having to turn on the big lights. So not only am I wasting unnecessary energy, but they also give off a lot of heat. So these are the bulbs that I used upstairs in the hallway, and I actually really like them. They were on sale this week, so I took advantage. So let's get these put in. I see on the dim end there's a much greater dead space, but that's to be expected. They do dim down really well though. That's what I found with these bulbs in particular. They do dim very nicely. On camera they look way brighter than they actually are. So this is a great improvement, one that I should have done quite some time ago. I'm quite happy with how these look. You can't even tell the difference. So that's another big chunk out of my incandescent lighting. I would of course like to get the display going all LED eventually as well. So this is going to wrap it up for me right now. I actually have to go edit and upload a video. So I will see you back here soon for another update. Hey guys, I am back. First of all, I have to catch you up on a little bit and then we'll get into what I'm doing today. First of all is this shelf edition, which basically leads into the other updates. I actually already had this shelf on hand in the last clips that I recorded, but I hadn't assembled it yet. In all the other updates, I just completely forgot that this was even a thing 
editing that was happening. I had planned on recording some of this process. However, my time did get cut short because we had some family coming in this weekend. And with that typically comes some touring of this space. So I basically just went into work mode the one spare night that I had. I got this shelf put up and basically full. So what went on here is I moved these oscillating fans over from where they were on this shelf. And I filled this in with box fans that weren't previously stored here. The only reason I did that is because the box fans wouldn't fit very well with my switching up here. And then the rest of this I filled in with fans that were previously everywhere else around here. This is really not organized in any way. I was just trying to get as many fans as possible on the shelves. So I just put on whatever I could make fit. The best part though is that this space at the bottom of the stairs is completely clear of portable fans again. It really just opens up the space and makes it feel a lot less claustrophobic. And then down at this end, some of these box fans also made it onto the shelf. You can see I've gained a little bit of space here. So that's pretty much it as far as the shelf itself goes. As far as the stuff that was sitting where the shelf currently is. I did some reorganization on this end to basically fit most of it onto these shelves. Since I had open space from shifting some of these things into the crawl space, everything fit over here fine. And then there was this little cabinet or console, whatever you call this, that was sitting there as well. I had to remove one of my display box fans to make it fit here, but I did just basically swing it around to this side of the wall. And I'll probably rework some of the display stuff that I have on it right now. I basically just moved some stuff over here to fill it up and make it look good for this weekend. So now I need to prepare for National Ceiling Fan Day. I'm pretty sure the video that you're currently watching is going to go up after National Ceiling Fan Day so I can show you everything I'm doing. But basically unless I can come up with something else to do on a yearly basis, I'm just going to put up videos of what's currently on my display for National Ceiling Fan Day. However, right now I want to switch some things around so that there's new stuff to see and maybe some surprises. So I have a little bit of a game plan going already. I'm really going to be all over the place so I'm just going to set up and record and time lapse as much as I can. Maybe do some check-ins along the way. But otherwise I'm just going to get started. All right, so a lot has happened. You guys just watched a majority of it. What I just finished off camera was moving this original over to where the wind was. I haven't finished wiring. I'm going to break for some food right now and I'll come back and do that. I am going to remove the light kit. This one will have no light and there will be another original going here and there will be a light on that one. I'm sort of breaking some of my own rules now by putting fans that are similar finishes or the same brand next to each other. I'm just trying to create kind of a different story with different sections of the display. So obviously right here there's going to be a row of three oil bath hunters. It'll kind of just show some of the progression of the fan. I have open spots over here which I am working on filling. Going in I knew I wanted to create what's going on over here but I didn't know what was going to go back into these spots. The Lady Delta came down because I wanted to do a new video for it. That'll probably be out before this video even goes up but I also so just want to refresh a bunch of things throughout this section. I'm thinking I'm going to take down the Eurus here because I don't want four hunters in a row. I may end up moving it or it might come down entirely. So likely what will happen is I'll finish up this portion because I know what I'm doing with it. And then I'll come back to this end and figure out what exactly I'm going to fill everything in with. So I will see you guys again when I get back. 
I'm back and I have the trio up and running. I forgot to show you before, but I did just go with a regular variable speed control for the Type 52 this time. All right, you guys just watched the Santa Cruz go up. I will be adding the light kit. I just don't know what I'm going to put on yet. I thought I figured out what I was going to do here, but now I think I'm changing my mind. So this location is still open right now. I think I will still be revamping at least one or two things through here, but I am going to have to wrap it up for tonight. A couple of these last few to go up have required some customization. For example, on the A52, I had to cut a custom down rod. So while while it hasn't looked like I've accomplished much, it's actually taken quite a while to get here. So I'm headed out. I think next time you see me, it should be more of the same. I am back again. It's been a number of days again since I last recorded. I think the only thing that I've done since then is finish off the Santa Cruz. I wish I had some better fitting glass for it. I had planned on using some very 90s inspired Emerson glass, but it's more designed to go in a K4S style fitter and it just didn't fit in this light kit. So so I kind of just ended up going very generic. I may continue to workshop this one. I do have a lot of various glass sitting around, so I may find something I like better later, but for now I just wanted to get this one done. So now in addition to my original section over here, I have a little section of modern and contemporary late 80s and 90s designs. Once again, just creating a little bit more of a specific area within the overall display. Now I'm going to head over here. I think I'm going to pull the Eurus down. As as I mentioned before, I thought I knew what I was going to do here, but I decided to hold off and I'm going to reevaluate that after I decide what I'm going to do with this location. So I don't even know yet what I'm going to do with this spot. I'm going to go figure that out now and then the next clip you see should probably be me replacing this fan. All right, you guys, this is what we ended up with in this spot. I'm sorry that I didn't record more. Getting this one up has just been kind of a pain. I worked on it for quite some time. I almost gave up on it more than once, just wanting to switch to something else entirely. But when I thought of this one, I was really excited about the idea because it covers a lot of bases. It brings in the spinner presence, which I am kind of missing throughout the display. Spinners just aren't really ever my first display choice for some reason but I do love industrials, so this one also brought in that factor, and it also covered the light kit that I needed. But once I got it up, I thought I would be able to just use the same wall control that the Eurus was using, but it didn't like the low speed on that control, so then I had to go through testing a number of controls. Finally, this one from the Atlas wall fan upstairs that I took out and replaced with a variable control actually produced a fairly good low speed. It doesn't have a light dimmer but I don't really need that either. So then after solving the wall control dilemma, I forgot how ungodly loud this fan is, especially when a light kit is on it. So if I crank it up to high speed, you can hear it a little bit, but what I was working on was putting in isolation for the glass. So now it's fairly quiet. So that was another issue I ran into, but then the final issue was that I was having a major wobble problem on high speed. But what I'm thinking is somewhere between the open ceiling and being so close to the wall. 
well, okay, then my memory card just ran out of space. What I was saying is I think somewhere between the open ceiling and being so close to the wall, it's creating some sort of vortex that's making it wobble. This fan takes a long time to get up to full speed, and it only wobbles when it really gets up there. Before that, there's absolutely no issue, so I don't really think that it's a wobble I can fix. I just spent a very long time switching the blades around to different configurations, as well as trying weights. It got slightly better with a weight I currently have on it, but it's not resolved completely. It's at the point where I just have to say that it's good enough. So now on to the final space, which you may have seen off to the side already. I decided to just finish this one off camera and get it done. I did my 42 inch JCPenney Moss, which is basically a small heirloom. I don't have much for classic G events out here since I took the Winco down, so I was thinking this would be a good place to bring them back in. Now this fan looks a little small in this space when you look at the surrounding fans. This is where I got a little bit held up because I was thinking if I did a slightly smaller fan here, I could do a slightly larger fan here to make up the difference a little bit. But once I got excited about this idea, that pretty much makes it impossible to do a larger fan here with that spacing. But everything worked out fine, and I'm actually really happy with how everything has turned out. So with that, I think my display is complete for National Ceiling Fan Day. I don't think I'm going to change anything else. So I think I'm actually going to close out this video so that I can get something up in this series for you. This may actually be the next video up after National Ceiling Fan Day. It would make sense to put this up while it's relevant to the topic. So thank you all for watching. Remember to subscribe and turn on your notifications before you leave, and I will see you next time. Click left to watch my last vlog, or click right for the entire shop vlog playlist so that you can start at the beginning.